July is the season for school exams and holidays in China. This July, parents in many places have encountered incidents big and small that have made them angry. Here, thousands of parents kneeled at the Nankai Primary School in Tianjin, shouting for the principal to be replaced. The footage, after coming to light, has sparked concern in the community. <laughs> Parents staged a mass protest on July 25, 2023, because Tianjin Nankai Primary School planned to move students into classrooms currently under renovation in September. It triggered fears of formaldehyde poisoning among the parents, so they gathered near the school campus and knelt as they demanded to have the principal replaced. A huge crowd gathered on the campus and the parents were shouting, replace the principal, but the school administration hasn't responded as of yet. In recent years, the student population at the school has increased dramatically. In the fall, the number of teachers and students will stand at around 6,000. Some parents in Tianjin revealed that because of the relatively low scores on Tianjin's college entrance exam, the school had attracted many students from outside the city in recent years. One parent told overseas Chinese language media, My son graduated from an elementary school in Heping district this year. Since he was in 5th grade, the number of classes has suddenly gone from 4 to 8, with an influx of students from outside the city. Better schools are expanding, and another school is being built over there. The harm of formaldehyde exceeding the standard is quite serious, and no matter what, for the sake of their children's health, parents have to assert their rights. What do people think about parents on their knees? Many netizens left comments. One wrote, I'm beginning to agree with those who say kneeling is a form of resistance. It's humble, but that's indeed resistance. Under the high pressure of tyranny, kneeling is the only safe way for people to fight and defend their rights. When I see people kneel like this, I know that the suffering of the Chinese people will never end. Formaldehyde is the most common indoor air pollution toxin. Long-term exposure to low doses can cause chronic respiratory diseases, throat and nose cancer, colorectal cancer, brain tumors, and genetic mutation of cell nuclei. In China, tainted formula and toxic vaccines have been in the news since the early years, causing fear and panic among Chinese parents. Later, there were reports of poison school runways, uniforms, stationery, cutlery, desks and chairs, and so on. A series of toxic stuff is frequently found in mainland China's schools. For example, the toxic runway. In 2017, a school in Hunan province had hundreds of students suffering from nosebleeds, vomiting and headaches due to a toxic runway. When the local media came to the school to cover the story, frightened and angry parents cried and complained in front of the media cameras. This video was provided by the parents. <laughs> Chinese media noticed the problem of toxic runways in May 2015. At that time, students in many campuses in Chengdu, Beijing, and Shenyang suffered from nosebleeds, vomiting, and headaches. The plastic school grounds and runways renovated or newly built were the main source of the sickness. Then, similar incidents of toxic runways broke out nationwide a few years ago during the summer and fall heat. According to incomplete statistics, in 2015, the toxic runway involved at least six provinces and municipalities such as Jiangsu, Guangdong, Shanghai, Zhejiang, Jiangxi, Hernan, etc., with a total of 15 specific cities and towns. The widespread and continuous occurrence of toxic runways has triggered a high degree of media attention, and many media outlets carried out in-depth reports on toxic runways. A reporter with Xinhua News Agency found that the main reasons for the frequent occurrence of toxic runway incidents included a lagging standard for plastic runways. The reporter noted the existence of backdoor operations and low bidding prices for the construction of school grounds, illegal construction and the illegal addition of toxic and hazardous substances as a result of low bids. The reporter also noted a lack of quality supervision due to buck passing between regulatory organs. At that time, a CCTV investigation found that the Beijing school grounds and the toxic runway are made of waste tires, cables, plastic garbage, etc. However, this edition of the CCTV program was soon taken off the air.
Another example is toxic stationery. Cartoon pencil sharpeners, pens with charms, and shiny white paper are some of the most popular products among children. But many of these products on the Chinese market are toxic. In 2021, a branch of the Chinese Academy of Sciences tested and analyzed four brands of scented highlighters. These items are popular among primary and secondary school students. It was found that in the volatile odors of the ink used by the highlighters, a total of 15 volatile elements were detected. Ten were toxic, including acrylonitrile, which is highly toxic. Studies show that prolonged inhalation of acrylonitrile can cause nausea, vomiting, headache, fatigue, and other symptoms. At that time, the person in charge of a stationary testing organization in Guangdong told the Chinese media, "Some of the colorful, low-quality color pigments attached to book covers and pencil bags may contain carcinogenic aromatic amines, as well as lead, mercury, cadmium, and many other heavy metal elements." And prolonged exposure may result in the migration of carcinogenic aromatic amines to the human body. It may cause human lesions or induce cancer. According to the Xinhua News Agency report, data released by the State Administration of Market Supervision and Administration shows that as of June 15, 2020, China recalled a total of 51 children stationery involving 1,355,400 units. As a state news agency, the Xinhua News Agency reports with the purpose of whitewashing the government, so the actual situation should be even more serious than what is described in the report. Let's go back to the tainted school uniforms. The Chinese media broke the story in early 2013 about a manufacturing liability incident that jeopardized the health of students. Several schools in Shanghai were involved in this incident. A total of 22 batches of student uniforms were sampled and inspected, covering major manufacturers in Shanghai, and six batches were tested to be unqualified, with a pass rate of only 73 percent. And one of the products had carcinogenic ingredients. The main offender in the Shanghai school uniforms incident is the decomposable aromatic amines in clothing dyes, of which benzodyne, the most toxic, can lead to bladder, renal, pelvic, and other cancers. At the time when the incident became widely known, 21 secondary schools and elementary schools in Shanghai stopped using school uniforms. However, similar incidents didn't stop despite the intense media coverage. Later, such voices were gradually suppressed, with only sporadic reports. Now, with the addition of poison classrooms and dormitories, it's becoming increasingly alarming for parents who were born in the 1980s and who were usually the only child at home. They just can't keep up with the emerging toxins found in the environment they and their children live in. Being a parent in China is so hard. Look at this scene. What are so many people gathering for? Listen to what they are chanting. <laughs> Xi'an children must go to school. Xi'an children must go to school. Xi'an children must go to school. For several days, many people in Xi'an, Shanxi Province, have gathered in front of the city square, the provincial education department, and the district's bureau of letters and visits. They protested the presence of a large number of students from Henan Province in the annual high school admittance exam. These returning students are said to have crowded out local education resources, making it impossible for local students to go to senior high school. It's said that the protest in Xi'an has attracted national attention. This is because it's directly related to children's education. If you ask Chinese people, especially parents, what they care about most, about half of them will answer that it's their children. So their children's education concerns them a great deal too. We can see when it's time for the college entrance exam in China, many parents will take time off work and wait outside the exam halls. Why is that? It's because this exam means a lot to a family, and it's extremely competitive due to the system under the CCP regime. The protest began on July 18th when some parents gathered in New Town Square in front of the Shanxi Provincial Government. On July 19th, parents moved to the entrance of the Shanxi Provincial Department of Education, where they chanted the slogan "Xi'an children want to go to school." The authorities sent many police officers to stabilize the scene. On July 21st, many parents protested at the Xi'an Petition Bureau of Letters and Visits, and then in front of the petition bureaus of various districts. The protests lasted until July 22nd. So, what exactly happened that made parents react so strongly and stage the protests? Shanxi Province is one of China's major education provinces. We may only think of Peking University and Tsinghua University as the prestigious ones when referring to good universities in China. 
In fact, Shanxi Province is ranked high on the list of top-tier universities and colleges according to the Chinese government. Among the 985 universities detailing the top 39 universities in China, Shanxi has three. And among the 211 projects that includes the top 112 universities in China, Shanxi has eight. However, the other province involved in this story, Hernan Province, which is next to Xi'an, can be described as very different when it comes to educational resources. At the end of 2022, the province had a population of 98.72 million. It's the third most populous province in China. But there is only one university that is included in the premium lists of 985 and 211 which is Zhengzhou University. Meanwhile, Shanxi province has close to 40 million people, according to the results of the 7th National Census in 2022. So for Shanxi, the ratio of population to top-tier universities is 3.64 million to 1. But for Henan, the ratio is nearly 100 million to 1, a 27-fold difference between the two numbers. Audiences from other countries may find it strange that where one is born has so much bearing on where one goes to college. It's the case in China. The same university has different standards or admission scores for different regions. The admission scores for local students are usually lower. For example, Beijing has top-tier schools like Peking University and Tsinghua University. They have much lower admission scores for local students, but high scores for students from other places. In addition, there are quotas for universities in China. In 2021, there were 52,000 students enrolled in the college entrance exam in Beijing, with admissions of just 375. It means, on average, one out of 100 people were able to attend Tsinghua in Peking universities. Yet, in Yunnan province, only 3 out of about 10,000 people got into them. Slightly lower than Beijing was Shanghai, with an admission rate of 0.44%. So basically, 200 people were admitted to Tsinghua and Peking University. This has indirectly led to the fact that Beijing and Shanghai house registrations are worth a lot of money. Therefore, except for these two cities, students from other cities who managed to get into Tsinghua or Peking University are considered the chosen ones. In other words, the probability that a student in a remote province in the southwest fails to get into a top university like Peking University is much smaller if they had household registration in Beijing or Shanghai. They can get into a top university much more easily, and right now what is happening in Xi'an is essentially something like this. There were fewer good universities in Henan and more good universities in Shanxi, and these two provinces are neighbors. This directly leads to the fact that students from Henan migrate to Shanxi for schooling. If they can get into better schools with the same grades, why not? The current protest isn't directly related to the college entrance exam, but somewhat. The direct cause is the middle school exam, that is, the one exam that decides a student's high school choice. Shanxi's capital, Xi'an, has a strict local policy for college entrance exam in terms of both household registration and school registration. It requires exam takers to have lived in the city for at least three years, and what's more, they must have attended a local school for three years before they are considered eligible to take the college entrance exam in Xi'an. Seeing a business opportunity, local education counseling organizations, private schools, or tutorial institutions in Xi'an have come up with options for students from out of town. For example, Henan candidates can go to Xi'an to take the examination starting from the middle school exam, and then they go to high school in Xi'an for three years while living in Xi'an. It makes them eligible for the college entrance exam in Xi'an. As a result, it has drawn many students from Henan province attending local private schools and tutorial organizations in Xi'an. In addition, Xi'an had a household registration reform in 2017. It loosened the policy, making it possible for parents from out of town to obtain household registration in Xi'an. It has also made it possible for children who live outside of Xi'an to return to the city for the secondary school exam, as long as their parents have the local household registration. So many Henan families started to take action, going through a process like this. First, they obtain household registration in Xi'an, and then children sit for the secondary school exams in Xi'an through various educational institutions. After three years of high school in Xi'an, students will naturally take the Xi'an college entrance exam and get a better chance to enter a good university. By 2023, the number of candidates for the Xi'an secondary school exam have reached roughly 100,000. Let's use Shanghai as a comparison to highlight the peculiarity of the situation. 
Shanghai has a population of more than 24 million, and in 2023 there will be 110,000 candidates for the secondary school exam. Xi'an's population is less than half of Shanghai's, about 13 million, yet candidates for the secondary exam will be about 100,000. The number of candidates for the secondary school exam is indeed significantly higher in comparison. Why is this? According to what has been exposed online, at least 40,000 of the 100,000 candidates in Xi'an are returning students, students returning from out of town. Xi'an parents have complained, saying that these candidates from other cities have seriously jeopardized the right to education of local students. It has raised the admission scores of high schools. The full score is 700 and the admission score is now 16 points higher than last year's. Basically, students with less than 600 points would have no school to go to. Xi'an parents believe that while these candidates who parachuted in before the exams are crowding out Xi'an's secondary school quota on the surface, they are actually taking up spots for the college entrance exams three years from now. Local parents worry that the increase in the number of returning students will not only make it more difficult for their children to enter a good high school, but will also lead to tougher competition in the college entrance examination three years later. Soon after, on July 18th, the Xi'an Municipal Bureau of Education quickly issued a statement saying that the 40,000 returning students rumored on the internet were grossly inaccurate. More than 100,000 people have passed the qualification review of the secondary school exam in 2023. Students whose household registration is in Xi'an but school registration isn't, in other words the rumored returning students, is only 3,608, accounting for 3.5% of the city's total number of exam takers. The authorities' dismissal of the rumor further provoked the public's anger. Subsequently, photographic evidence of household registration falsification was circulated online. The inside story was unveiled bit by bit. Some parents said that their main demands are, first, how many returning students are there in reality? Secondly, how has this group of returning students come about? Thirdly, how long has this industry chain existed as its scope of influence has now become relatively big? The July 21st protest at the Xi'an Petition Bureau was the most dramatic, with about 400 or so people reportedly on scene, and then more and more gathered, with a line of police officers roughly 100 or so standing in the front. The protesters were unable to get inside the building. Around 4 p.m., the new mayor of Xi'an appeared at the scene, but parents felt that he couldn't really solve the problem but only alleviate the incident a bit. On the evening of July 21st, officials announced a plan to deal with the situation, claiming that they would seriously crack down on educational migrant organizations and bring the guilty ones under some kind of control. A resident disclosed. Every year, personal information of those who get into Tsinghua and Peking University will be announced including their ID cards, household registration information, and names. This year, such information is no longer available. It only announced how many of us were admitted to higher education institutions, who was who and it's over. It is going against the common practice of the previous years. Contemporary education in China is not only a cause but also a lucrative industry. Good schools help students get good grades and get into top-tier universities. As a result, they can recruit more students. Good schools can help grow businesses in their surrounding areas such as appreciated land prices or better selling and rental prices for school district real estate. It's a chain of industries. It's said that through managing government relations and other offline resources, these broker agencies can get things done quickly. If they charge one student 200,000 yuan for 40,000 students, the revenue would have exceeded more than 100 million yuan. Thus, one can see an industrial chain has formed. Many parents suspect that the local education bureau and even other government officials have been offering these educational brokers the green light because they see a business opportunity for profit. That is, making money off Henan students who wish to attend schools in Xi'an. Such operations are known as Gaokao or entrance exam migration. China's education ministry has cracked down on the phenomena in recent years. However, this latest incident seems to reflect this phenomena to have advanced to the stage of secondary school exams, creating secondary school exam migrants. Parents reflected, As a parent, I think this is too much. This is about the life of the next generation. If we can't solve it, I think no matter how big a social issue is, the common people won't care. This is an important historical matter and it concerns the healthy development of the next generation. It isn't a simple matter. The incident has revealed the problem of an industrial chain. It's the main reason for public outcry.
A citizen said, I am furious. These Henan people register a household in advance without going to school in Xi'an, and they will take part in Xi'an's exam by taking a set of training before it. They will snatch up the educational resources. What's the point of us buying homes here? We have been burdened with decades of mortgage payments for the sake of our children's schooling, and they have solved it by registering a household here. If it doesn't get addressed this time, there will be more and more such cases if this loophole doesn't get removed. We can see that the controversy about returning students mainly lies in the unbalanced allocation of education resources in different parts of China. The household registration system with Chinese characteristics together with the college entrance exam and secondary school exam system with Chinese characteristics has created a network of injustice for Chinese people right from birth and eventually intensified the conflicts among the people in different regions and cities of China. So, are the Xi'an parents' protests working? From what is circulating on the Chinese web, it appears that many parents have received threatening phone calls from the authorities forbidding any involvement in the matter. It said that the government has now directly ordered that if anyone goes out and takes time off work because of this, they simply don't need to return to work. In other words, participating in the protest means losing one's job. In fact, what the parents have been experiencing, as previously mentioned, isn't even the worst of it. Look, these young girls in their prime are playing volleyball. But in a flash, all this was over. Amidst the sea of morning flowers, these young blissful girls departed from this world and from their parents. As we reported in a previous episode, at 2.56pm on July 23rd, 2023, the roof of a school gym suddenly caved in completely when a girls volleyball team were training inside. The incident resulted in the death of at least 10 team members and a female coach, while a male coach and other team members were injured. The gym was later criticized by many as a tofu dreg project. Look at the gym at the number 34 school. Its iron frames and pipes were so thin, no wonder they collapsed. Late on the night of July 23rd, government officials held a stack of A4 paper and asked parents to sign it. Some parents were crying. They weren't allowed to see their children's bodies unless they signed. What's going on? Can this be resolved? We are afraid to tell the elderly in our family who had heart surgery last month. Do you know how we feel? When I was signing the paper, the elders at home kept calling to ask how their granddaughter was. They called one after another, one after another. You won't let us see our children if we don't sign the papers? Why don't you let us see the kids? Yes, why don't you let us see the children? The official said, it's already come to this. Let's take care of the signature business now. It angered the parents again. They shouted, My girl is 13 years old. How old is yours? How old is your child? How old is your child? I want to ask. At which point the police stepped in. Control your emotions. A parent told overseas Chinese language media that on the morning of July 24th, the area around the school gym was completely cordoned off. One can only see it from the outside. In fact, the parents haven't caused any trouble at the hospital, but the government still sent police to maintain order. From July 24th, local citizens in Chichihar spontaneously went to the school entrance to lay flowers to pay tribute. People from around the country have sent flowers to the scene. For a while, the school entrance was filled with flowers, snacks, volleyballs, canned peaches, and other memorial items. Some Shanghainese also laid flowers on the Chichihar Road in the city but the police force was quickly increased on the road. On July 30th, a video showed that flowers, canned peaches, snacks, and other offerings in front of the school were cleared away. Another video shows that those who came to pay tribute to the victims were told that flowers couldn't be placed at the school entrance and were to be put at the funeral home. After the accident, several videos of victims' parents describing their own experiences or confronting doctors and officials have been circulating on social media platforms such as Weibo and WeChat. Their stories have attracted a lot of attention and sympathy from the general public, many of whom are angry at the indifference and bureaucracy of the local government. There have been many discussions on social media platforms. This is a young mother supporting her daughter's volleyball practice, kneeling in front of a sea of flowers in front of the school. Mom was wrong. Mom was wrong. I'm on my knees to you. I hurt you. 
However, several topics related to the Chichihar Jim Cave-In hit the Weibo search list in the first one to two days, but they gradually disappeared from China's social media platforms over the next couple of days. As of the early morning on the 29th, there was not a single topic related to the incident on the Weibo hot list. For the parents who lost their children, they have now even been denied the right to kneel in public. Oh, my God.